Good morning, everyone. Uh, it was chilly last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So um, I have an announcement from Social Ministry that came in this morning. Um, it says, good morning, all. Our Eastern Shore Ministry has contacted us today and asked if we had any coats, heavy jackets, sweaters, and or bedding for 40 migrant men who do not have anything to keep them warm. Here's the catch. You need to bring them today. Yes, because the food bags tomorrow are being picked up. So it's one trip for her to come down to get the food and the jacket. So, or, you know, the bedding. So that entrance that you normally come in, even if the inner door is locked, just put them in there on the bench. Um, we just need 40 uh, for 40 men. Um, and again, the lady is driving down tomorrow to pick up the food. Um, and hopefully, the last time we did this, we had over 200 coats, which is amazing. That's just a tribute to your generosity. But we only need for 40 men. <laughs> 40 men. <laughs> just remember that, 40 men. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are united today both in person and with our online family. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased Donald Buckley. A couple of reminders for those present today. Please follow the guidelines from our volunteer ushers so we can maximize seating space. And after Mass, please exit the building promptly so we can begin sanitizing. Thank you. Today's Mass is being streamed live. For our online assembly, you can find the song sheet for today's Mass in our worship guide on the resources page of our website. For home, from home, you can sing along. The Sacrament of Reconciliation will not be offered will not be offered next Saturday, October 24th, but resumes the following Saturday, October 31st, from 10 a.m. to noon. Join us this week for a free online webinar offered by our stewardship committee called Get Your Things in Order on October 22 and 23. Visit our website for more information. Are you a Catholic who has been away from the church and want to pursue coming back? Landings is an eight-week process that explores returning to full participation. A new group is starting this Thursday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. Please contact the Faith Formation Office for more details. There is still room in our adult fall retreat for married couples. Marriage, what's love got to do with it? A one-day retreat on Saturday, October 31st from 9 a.m. and it concludes at 5.30 p.m. Vigil Mass. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, only the first 10 couples to sign up can be permitted to attend. Email Deacon Jim by Monday to sign up. Lastly, YOA Golf Tournament. Deadline to register is this Wednesday, October 21st, for the 17th annual YOA Golf Classic on Friday, October 30th, 2020, at Heron Ridge Golf Course. Golfing begins at noon. The YOA Golf Classic is the largest fundraiser for the YOA. See the church website for simple reg online registration information. Please rise. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, mercy, and peace of God, our loving Father, be with each of you. Amen. Our Lord Jesus taught his followers to exercise discernment, that is, thoughtful choice, in carrying out their duties to God and to their country. We pray about that now. Lord Jesus, you actually do call us to hasten your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all power for good. It is that that we seek. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your dominion is everlasting. This we profess. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on all of us and forgive us our sins and bring each of us to life everlasting. yesterday or the mass this afternoon, I mean later this morning, it is my joy to report to you that Father Daniel has returned and resumed his duties as pastor, celebrating mass starting last Friday. So he's back and we're glad to have him. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. We say this through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, as our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him 
and leaving the gates barred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, given you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, give the Lord glory and honor. Give Give the Lord Lord glory glory and honor. honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Give Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord your families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give Give the Lord Lord glory glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the people with equity. Given the glory and honor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Savanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling in mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our God did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of the gospel in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him a Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good morning. The common theme of today's readings is the nature of our obligations to God and to our country. The readings show us how, with God's help, we can be ideal citizens of both earth and heaven. In the first reading and in the gospel, a world superpower is matched up against the kingdom of God. Isaiah the prophet foretells how, indirectly, the policies of the great Persian emperor Cyrus will help God's saving plan for his chosen people. The words of the responsorial psalm summon all Israel, all the nations, and all creation to acknowledge and to praise the Lord as, the Lord as king of the universe. The psalm reminds us that when people put God's kingdom first, everyone benefits. In the second reading, referring to Jesus as our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul acknowledges Jesus as the one who shares divine power with God the Father. Paul reminds the Thessalonians that it was God who chose them to live in him, giving them the faith to believe in and to trust in him, and the love to pour out in service to their neighbors. In the gospel, Jesus escapes from the trap of the question, is it lawful to pay the census tax, by eventually replying, pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. By this answer, Jesus reminds us, reminds his questioners, that if they are so concerned and careful about paying taxes to the state, they should be much more concerned and careful about their service to God and their obligations to him as their creator and Lord. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians were three prominent Jewish sects in Jesus' day. Together with the chief priests, these three groups accused Jesus of associating with sinners and challenged his authority to teach in the temple. Turning their trap upside down, Jesus answered the question with one of his own. Whose image and inscription are on the coin? The coin was a denarius with the image of the emperor on one side and the title high priest on the other. Caesar's, they said. Jesus then gave them the give back to Caesar and give to God answer. Jesus' answer acknowledges our obligation as citizens of the state, but affirms our larger obligation to God. Both the state and God require certain loyalties of us, but we owe God our very lives. Thus, the question posed to Jesus might more appropriately have been phrased, whose side are you on, Israel's or Rome's? The answer Jesus provided very, very clearly states, I'm on God's side, and reminds us that we all have gifts from our Creator. By birth, we become citizens of the country of our birth, and by baptism, we become citizens of heaven. In every age, Christians have faced balancing the demands of Caesar with the commands of God. Jesus' answer forms the guiding principle in solving the problems that arise from our dual citizenship. A loyal Christian is always a loyal citizen. Failure in good citizenship is also failure in Christian duty. We fulfill our duties to our country by loyally obeying the laws of the state, the just laws of the state, by paying all lawful taxes, and by contributing our share toward the common good. Cooperation with secular authority cannot interfere with our primary duty of giving back to God our whole selves. We fulfill our duties to God by being faithful, loyal, active members of the spiritual kingdom of God and of the church Christ established on earth. Thus, a real Christian is simultaneously a good citizen of his country and a good citizen of the kingdom of heaven. But his priority is his allegiance to God. There is no reason why the state and the church cannot work together to improve the lives of citizens. There is usually no conflict unless the government forces people to act in a way contrary to God's laws. Then we must act in accordance with God's law and not man's because while a state exists only in this world, 
God's law exists in this world and the next. When Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's, the command really asks us whether we have invested our hearts in the right place. There is only one way to find out. Let us check our daily choices, the little ones as well as the big ones, and look for patterns. What do we usually do when decision time comes for where we will spend our prime time and our best energies? These are the infallible indicators of what we truly value and what we don't. Whose image do others see when they look at our lives? When people see us, do they see Jesus engraved upon us? To the extent that they do, we make visible the extent to which we belong to the kingdom of God. UN Secretary Dog Hammarskjöld was a great servant of peace. He was that rare person for whom public service is not simply a career, but a religious vocation, a way of being faithful to God. He said, indifference to evil is worse than evil itself. In a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. Therefore, if Christians do not participate in the public arena, the opportunity to serve our neighbor and thereby God is missed. In his inaugural address on January 20th, 1961, President John F. Kennedy gave that famous challenge, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to the land we love, asking God's blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. If we personalized Kennedy's statement, it would read, don't ask what my country can do for me. Instead, ask, what can I do for my country? Rather, maybe we shouldn't ask, what can God do for me? Instead, we should ask, what can I do for God? Today's gospel gives the correct answer. When Christians properly discharge their duties to God and to their government, the country and God's cause prosper. They say when you get old, you lose your memory. Um, I'll be 89 in a couple of months. Uh, I thought I was preaching today. <laughs> but I have, I have here a, a little humorous story to close my homily, which you won't hear. <laughs> but I would like to do the story. Would you mind? Because it makes the point that I will close with. There was a little boy riding his bicycle furiously around the block over and over and over again. And a neighbor who was pruning his shrubbery out front was watching this boy going round and round and round at a crazy pace. So finally, he stopped the boy and said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm running away from home. Well, why do you keep going around the block, he, the neighbor said. Because the little fellow said, because my mom said I'm not allowed to cross the street. <laughs> now my point is clear here. The boy's obedience was keeping him close to a point of authority, all right? But he stuck to the place where those who loved him the most were, okay? God is not out of this world, as the saying goes. God is in this world. This is where we give to God what belongs to God. This is where we experience obedience to God. This is where we stop going around in circles trying to run away from God. This is where we run into him where we can go home to God. 
the one who loves us the most. We are that little boy. There's always a danger, you see, of seeing the here and now Caesar's world as only one side of the coin of the realm, so to speak, as though it was opposite the other side of the coin, God's world. But there's also a danger of seeing the things of God as the other side of the coin, separate from what we are, say, Monday through Saturday. There is not and there shouldn't be any separation between the two. It may be a struggle. Well, it is a struggle. Let's admit it. For us at times to reconcile the two, God's world and this world. But they're both the coin of the realm. It is here that we work out our eternity. Amen, amen, amen. Want to lead us in the praise then? Please rise and join in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was plunged. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and His Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Because God's name is love, we can confidently offer Him our needs in prayer. In thanksgiving for Father Daniel's safe return to our Ascension family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and Bishop Nestout, may they bring the light of Christ to those whose lives have been darkened by the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. In this election season, we ask you to send your spirit to comfort worried and anxious hearts and to help keep us centered in Christ during our time of discernment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. May those suffering with COVID-19 heal to complete health. We ask you to bring comfort and healing to all who carry the cross of pain and illness, especially Connie Alphys, Teresa Alphys' sister, and John Stevens. For those names who are in our bulletin and the names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and those in our columbarium that you welcome into your eternal kingdom and for those weekend mass intentions, Katrina Kamovas Sauer, Donald Buckley, Arthur Shaw. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, give us the grace to really be your people so that all peoples may also become yours, united in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will be for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness, too, that we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, yet the work of our hands, it will be for us a spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, by this mingling of wine and water, may we be enabled to share his divinity, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is for each of us a loving Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. And again we say, we uh, say this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and always through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. <coughs> Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration. For you are holy, O oh Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise, as we do now. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus, by the power and working of that Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And we ask that this people may receive you in holiness. your body and blood, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night you were betrayed, you took bread, and giving thanks, you said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his, your disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon this oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile all things to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we do pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of your world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on this earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, bury our bishop here. In fact, the order of bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have gained as your very own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you now. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered elsewhere. And now we pray for our beloved dead, our departed brothers and sisters, Donald today in particular, for all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give them admittance to your kingdom, your eternity of peace, for we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of that same glory and peace. And always through Christ, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. our Savior gave us as a model for all prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your kindness, keep us free from sin. Protect us from every needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon our faithfulness and grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord 
be with each of you. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. bring me judgment or condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body, a healing remedy. And now, my friends, will you join me in praying so that our brothers and sisters who cannot be with us this morning may receive the Eucharist, at least spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to take the bread of my mercy. Only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age, prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask again this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And it's me. My dad died when I was 10 years old, and I came of age during the social, political, and religious turmoil of the 1960s. By 1970, I had been living for 10 years without dad's love and guidance. I faithfully attended weekly mass up through my junior year in college. However, I really wanted to sleep in on Sunday morning. Eventually, I stopped going to mass, and for the next 25 years, I was Catholic in name only. In 1994, I heard a speaker at a business convention ask, what is your goal in life? After a brief pause, he continued that if being in heaven with God the Father is not at the top of the list, you might want to rethink what you're doing. That got my attention. I had never heard such talk before, and I wanted to know more. This is where my journey with Jesus really begins. 
In February of 1995, I came back to the church here at Ascension, and I was looking. I wanted knowledge, especially spiritual knowledge. I had a hole within me, and it was a hole that was in my heart. I took off the blindness formed by my worldly experiences, and I began recognizing the presence of God in my life. The Curcio program was a journey of deepening my relationship with Jesus. As my first marriage was disintegrating, the choice of what path to follow presented itself. Keep doing what you've been doing, or get back to those things you learned in your youth and were modeled by your dad. It was not an easy decision to make. In a book about successful Catholics, I found myself in a scenario with Jesus. I was wrestling with a divorce decision and seeking his advice. After a brief prayer, Jesus told me, I have faith in you and that he stands by my decision. Then he walked away. From that, I realized that the answer lies within. It was in my heart, a heart put there by God the Father and modeled for me by my dad. It was there all along, just deeply buried by life. At Bible study, I found knowledge and wisdom with the word of God being joyously proclaimed. In Curcio, I found love and support. In my wife, Kathy, I found the answer to a prayer. In a support group for those who lost a spouse, I found compassion. At an apologetics course, I found wisdom and understanding. In a spiritual direction course, I found greater compassion and greater understanding. In every one of these instances that I just mentioned, the person before me was an ascension parishioner, a vessel through which the love of God was made present. It has been you, my ascension brothers and sisters, who have modeled the love of God and the presence of his risen son for me. Participating in or just listening to discussions with you folks is an honor because it is so easy to find Jesus present. Like Bridget's talk last month, my journey has been a series of discoveries and of saying yes, of recognizing the person in front of me was really Jesus whispering in my ear or pointing me in the right direction. I have my Ascension family to thank for restoring my security in that unshakable love of God the Father for his children that I lost 10 years ago when I was 10. Conversion is a lifelong journey, a journey I eagerly look forward to continuing here at Ascension. Thank you. Do we have any guests or visitors from Zoom who would like to welcome you to our... If you are a guest or visitor, we'd like to welcome you to the parish. In order to do that, I would ask you to stand, tell us your name, and where you are from. Do we have any guests or visitors? Okay. Um, Saturday, the 31st, Halloween Day, there's also a retreat for married couples. We still have room for a couple more. It will start at 9 in the morning. It will end at, with a 5.30 mass in the evening. And... Uh, the theme is uh, what's love got to do with it, and uh, Deacon Dave Reeves and his wife Debbie will be the ones that conduct the, the retreat. So uh, if you're interested, there's still room, and the sign-up instructions are in the link on the, on the website. We are glad that you are back and coming to Mass. However, we still have to observe the COVID uh, restrictions, and as Mass ends, people are beginning to accumulate in the in the out in the commons and we need to observe the, the guidance that the bishop and the governor have given us and so I ask that you please do that outside the front door uh, so that we can say that we're in, with the, in compliance with the guidance. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come upon you now and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And if remember, go through your closet.
get some totes for men, sweaters, blankets, and if you haven't brought your food back, that needs to come back today too. Oh,